Can I retire if Social Security goes bankrupt? That's the question we're gonna to answer today on the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. We're looking at a strategy for a 60-year-old male. He's asking the question, hey Drew, can I retire if Social Security goes bankrupt? At the current moment, Social Security is probably going to be insolvent in the year 2033. Now, wait a second, what do I mean by insolvent? What I mean is they're not gonna have the ability to pay 100% of your social security benefits. So your retirement income is going to have a reduction in it sometime around the year 2033. Now, what does that look like moving forward? Well, if you take social security before the year 2033, nothing's gonna change. But after the year 2033, you're gonna see a 23% reduction in your social security benefit in your retirement income if something doesn't change. So what we need to look at today is how are we planning for that? How are we going to plan your retirement income if Social Security goes insolvent or can't pay the benefits that you have been promised? Remember, if you claim Social Security at 62, at the current moment, you'll get 70 percent of your full retirement benefit. That's if you were born after the year 1960. If you claim Social Security at 67, you're gonna get 100% of your promised full retirement benefit. And if you wait till 70, you'll get 124% of your full retirement benefit. But what's it look like after the year 2033? That's what I wanna go through today on the channel. All right, so let's look at a 60-year-old individual. He's retiring. He's got $450,000 saved for retirement. He's asking the question, can I retire at 60 with $450,000 saved for retirement? And what happens if Social Security goes insolvent? All right, so let's look at that. We've got a 60-year-old, and I've got two strategies here on the board. I've got Social Security stays, and I have a reduction in Social Security, so a 23% reduction in Social Security benefit. So let's look at the first strategy, which is Social Security stays, and there's no changes to your Social Security benefit. So we have $450,000 saved for retirement, which means we're gonna have to live off this $450,000 in retirement savings. Now, our expenses are $3,000 a month, okay? So we have $3,000 a month in retirement expenses, and we're gonna take Social Security at 62. So we're gonna get 70% of our full retirement benefit. And we're doing that because this individual with their expenses and with the retirement income that they need coming in, we're gonna have to take Social Security early in order to try to maximize the length of their retirement income. And you'll see what I mean as we go through this. Now we're 60 years old and we're starting this in the year 2023. So we're gonna look at a couple different factors that will affect this number. First of all, 5%. 5% is gonna be our rate of return on the money that's in the market. So this $450,000 that we have right now, it's gonna get a 5% rate of return forever. Now keep in mind, the market's averaged about 8% since 1950, that's with inflation. So we're gonna back up 3%. We're gonna to go to 5% rate of return, and we're gonna do this throughout his retirement. Now keep in mind, we're doing this on the board. When we do it in the Your Financial EKG, when we do it in the software, we're looking at not just a 5% geometric return, meaning 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, because you know that's not how the market works. The market's gonna go And so we need to look at that in the software. We've gotta get it right on the board first, then we can go to the software. The software, we're gonna do some Monte Carlo analysis, we're gonna do some randomized rates of return to see what would happen over the long term if we got randomized market returns, we're also gonna look at what happens if the market goes down certain percentages. But for this scenario, we're just looking at 5% rate of return. We're also gonna give a 3% inflation rate on the money, meaning the $3,000 that he needs to live and breathe is gonna get a 3% inflation rate. So that 3% is gonna compound monthly. Now I'm gonna show it as an annualized return here, but when we do this, when we're building out a retirement income plan for someone, we wanna build out inflation on a monthly basis, right? 
you go to Costco, I go to Costco, and when I go to Costco and I go back to the produce section and I go into that section that's really cold, they got the air conditioners blowing. Now we're from Florida, so I gotta put on a jacket when I go into Costco because it's so daggum cold. But raspberries today cost $3 more than they did last year. That's inflation. Now it's not gonna be like that forever, so we have to use a 109 year average for inflation, which is 3%. That's what we're gonna use for our rate of return, okay? Now, keep in mind, we're also gonna take Social Security at 62. So $450,000 is what we have in retirement savings. We're taking $3,000 a month out of our retirement savings to live off of. From 60 to 62, our 450,000 goes to 420,088, all right? That's a reduction because we've pulled money out. Now, we're still making 5% on our money, but we're having to pull out $3,000 a month or $36,000 a year. Now, at 62 in the year 2025, we're gonna start taking Social Security. We're gonna get 1750 a month, and this is a 70% of our full retirement benefits. So we're not getting 100% because we're taking it 62. Or if we took it at 67, we get 100% of our full retirement benefit. Our expenses, look at this, have grown to $3,234 a month. That's two years and that's 3% inflation. We've gone up $234 a month. Approximately, what was that, $2,500 a year? So $2,500 a year, that's a big deal. Compound that over time, that's a lot of money. Right now, I always say compound interest is God's greatest gift outside of Jesus. That's when you're saving, investing, contributing to your 401ks. The other side of compound interest, which is not good, is inflation. So we got to always factor that in. So at 62, we take Social Security. We're still going to look at a 5% rate of return and we're looking at 3% inflation. So everything is staying the same. We need to take $1,484 from our investments, right? From this $420,000 to live off of. That's the expenses subtracted from Social Security gets what we need for retirement income. So from 62 to 72, our investments go from 420 to 367, 419. So we have to be cognizant. Now from 62 to 72, we've gone down, what is that, 40, almost $60,000, $67,000 in retirement savings. So this is something we have to be monitoring on a daily basis or really on a monthly basis as we're pulling out income. We wanna make sure that we are invested in the appropriate investments that we're generating the ret retirement income that we need. Now at 72, we have $367,419. Now look what expenses have done. We started at $3,000 in expenses at 60. It's, we're 72, so we're 12 years into this, and now our expenses are $4,461. That's a huge jump, right? In just 12 years. Raspberries, right? 5% is our rate of return, 3% is our inflation. Now our Social Security has now gone to 2,258. That's a Social Security COLA increase we're using 2.58%. You can see that on Social Security's website. That's the average COLA for Social Security. Keep in mind, guys, I always say this to people. Social Security COLAs are not guaranteed. Yes, you will get a Social Security COLA every year, but it might not amount to a whole lot. Ask my grandmother, 82 years old. Ask her what her Social Security COLA increase was from like 2008 to 2020. Basically nothing. Okay, maybe five cents, 10 cents, a dollar, two dollars, something like that. So when we're factoring in colas, keep in mind, we've got to understand that cola increases on Social Security aren't guaranteed either. Now, the money we need for retirement income, 2,203, that's our retirement income need. 367 is what we got at 72. At 82, we have 89,522, and we're out of money at 84 years old. So from 60 to 82, We've taken our income, we've had social security, and we're at zero at 84. Now, in this scenario, we still have a house, we still have other options that we can look at. So we're just on the board right now. And keep in mind, the average mortality rate for a male, and this is a gentleman, is around 83, 84 years old. So he's running out of money at the time that most men are passing away. Now, does that mean it's a good plan? Not particularly. 
So we've got to have some other things we need to look at. He does have a home, it's paid off, maybe the reverse mortgage, whatever. Maybe he works a little longer. I know you don't like it when I say that, but whatever, part-time work, I don't know. He's gonna to have to do something. We'd like to see this maybe get a little bit more to his late 80s and into his 90s. Obviously, you can adjust spending as well bringing down expenses, but we're at $3,000 a month. That's pretty low as it is. And he does live in Florida, which is our cost of living has gone up since everybody else has moved here. Now let's look at a 23% reduction in social security. Can I retire at 60 with $450,000 in retirement savings and have a 23% reduction in Social Security because Social Security went insolvent. Remember, Social Security is calculated right now, not by the government, but by nonpartisan groups to basically go bankrupt in the year 2033. Now, bankrupt doesn't mean that Social Security ends. Bankrupt means they're not able to pay their full benefit. So 100% of your promised benefit. They'll have enough tax dollars coming in to pay out somewhere around 70 to 75% of benefits. The projection we're using is a 23% reduction, which is the most recent report on what Social Security would be reduced. And I'm gonna show you where Social Security is 1750 for this gentleman, 1652 is a 23% reduction. So let's look at what that would do in this case. Keep in mind, when we ran it through a normal scenario, no reduction in Social Security, he ran out of money at 84. Let's see what happens here, okay? Now, he's got $450,000 in retirement savings. $3,000 a month is our expenses. 5% is our rate of return and 3% is our inflation rate. So our money's getting a 5% rate of return and we're calculating in a 3% inflation rate moving forward on his expenses. From age 60 to 62 is 450, goes to $420,088. Just taking $3,000 a month or $36,000 a year with inflation over those two years, puts him at 420 and he's earned 5%. Now. The year 2025 is when we're kicking on Social Security. It's going to be 1750. So it's going to be 70% of his full retirement benefit. We still have a 5% rate of return. Okay, so our rate of return. And here's inflation at 3%. Now, our 420 from 62 to 70 goes from $420,000 in retirement savings to $394,621. Now, the reason I'm stopping in the year 2033, that's the year that Social Security is calculated to lower benefits. It's gonna to continue to pay out based on tax dollars coming in, but the payments will be about a 23, maybe 25, maybe 20, who knows? We're looking at a 23% reduction right now based on current data. So our Social Security goes from 1750 to 1652. You see that? To 1652. Now, I know for all you math geniuses out there, 1652 is not 23% of 1750. What we've done is we've taken the 1750 over the 62 to 70, over the eight year period, it had a 2.58% social security COLA increase. We took the COLA increase and we reduced the payment by 23%. So his benefit at age 70 in the year 2033 is 1652. It's not 23% of the original start date, it's 23% of the payment that it is now with the COLA increases. So here's what we've got. 4,183 is our expenses. That's inflation, 3,000 to 4,000. Wow, that's a big jump. 1652 is our social security, which means we need 2531 out of our retirement savings. So at 80, from 70 to 80, 2033 to 2043, we go to 73,009 and we're out of money at 82. So with a 23% reduction in social security benefit in this strategy, this person is out at 82, which is two years earlier than where they were if Social Security stayed where it's at. They were out at 84 in this scenario. They're out at 82 if Social Security has a reduction. Keep in mind, he still has a home that's paid for. We have some other options that we need to talk about, like working longer or part-time or just adjusting investments, maybe adjusting some of his spending and things like that. But I want you to see, that's a big deal. So we need to have a plan for this. You need to have a plan. 
We can't put our head in the sand and hope it doesn't happen, right? You and me both know, ain't nothing gonna get done in DC to the last minute. And are they gonna be able to fix Social Security at the last minute? Probably not. So we need to have a plan for what happens if I get a reduced Social Security benefit, okay? Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless. Bye-bye.